So we just get started with the three of us. Um, I, uh, well, Liv knows this, but I don't think Elliot's been here this week. Uh, all week we've been focusing on cherries, different kinds of cherries, and um, that has a couple of different like wild species and some cultivated species um, and ornamental species that are just for their flowers, <coughs> um, all within the uh, Prunus genus and the subgenus of Cerasus. That's what cherries primarily, very often are considered by the scientific community. Uh, and yesterday, we did some cherry pests and diseases, insects and uh, fungus and bacteria that affect and infect cherry species. Um, and I wanted to round out the week with uh, just kind of blowing through a couple, identifying a couple other species of cherries uh, that are in the Prunus genus. Uh, and then move on to a different type of tree that is called, also called a cherry, but isn't actually uh, related to the cherries. And it's, but it's a really good one. So we're gonna, uh, that's what we're gonna focus on today. If you have questions, as usual, raise your hand or just unmute yourself if I'm not noticing you. Uh, you can type things in the chat, whatever you want. So gonna get started on that. Um, so like I said, we're just gonna finish this, round it out with uh, photos of some other cherries that we haven't talked about yet. So this one is really common. Prunus cerasis is the very commonly uh, planted tart cherry. So these are sour cherries, uh, usually some people call them pie cherries. They're very often used in cherry pie making, um, cherry pie filling, and uh, they're resistant because they're tart and uh, because of the, the different, I guess, flavor profile and the different sugars within them, um, or less, I guess, fewer sugars. Um, they're a little bit more resistant to fungus and uh, those sorts of fungal diseases that are attracted to sugar. Um, so they're a little bit more, a little bit easier to take care of, and they often are shorter in size than sweet cherries, than larger, larger sweet cherry trees. Um, and I think they're delicious. Um, hey, Elijah. Uh, let's see what's in the chat here. Oh, Elliot has a cherry tree. That's cool. Um, Liv, good question. Are those the ones used in Shirley Temples? The the um, maraschino cherries uh, that are like soaked in syrup. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what kind of cherries those are because maraschino cherries end up being really sweet, but that's just because they're in sugar water. Um, my guess is that they they probably are uh, from these rather than from the the like bing cherries or the sweet cherries uh but that's just a guess i'm not actually sure what maraschino cherries are maybe we can look that up towards the end of the class um the next one is a wild uh a wild species called the pin cherry or prunus pennsylvanica and um it's it has you know pennsylvania essentially right in the name it is native to the eastern part of the United States, fairly similar to the um, Oregon cherry that we looked at the other day, Prunus emarginata. I believe they're fairly similar. Um, their fruit is pretty uh, bitter, and they, they say the word that they use is acid tasting, acidic tasting, um, but still, potentially edible. Um, and they have these big showy clusters of flowers, like we saw in black cherry. Um, but they are, they're actually in these droop formations, if you remember that word, um, 
droops are this, you know, when you have like a little cluster of flowers that end up being a little cluster of fruit. This one here called the choke cherry um, is referred, is called the choke cherry because most people think it tastes really bad. Um, it's really, really good for birds uh, and other uh, deer and other like smaller, <clears throat> excuse me, small woodland creatures. Some people make wine and jam still with these sorts of berries um, because, you know, if you add enough sugar to anything, people think it will taste good. So that kind of is how people deal with, with species like with fruit like this. Um, I've never tried it. I've never tried a choke cherry. I don't actually know if it's, if I would think it was good or not, but most people consider them inedible. Um, this one that I've never actually heard of before until looking up species for this class, which is really cool, is referred to as the common cherry laurel. Uh, and laurel is a Laurels are a, a type of plant. Uh, you might have heard of mountain laurel, maybe. Um, I think they are generally rhododendron species, uh, which are very common around here in the woods, uh, in the Pine Barrens. They, they like acidic soil and they have what are referred to as waxy leaves. They're like really kind of thick leaves. Um, and this uh, species of cherry in particular has characteristics that are somewhat like a laurel. They have a little bit thicker leaves. The leaves are, they look more like laurel leaves than like cherry leaves in my opinion. They're a little bit thicker, a little bit longer, um, and they're, most other cherry trees, and are, oops, oops, most other cherry trees, um, are, have more uh, serration. They're like serrated, like uh, like serrated knives. Um, and um, they are, I could not find in my uh, tree book. I, it didn't even say whether or not these cherries are edible. So my guess is that they probably are not tasty. Um, I am going to try to figure that out. But the, the book that I, the only book that I have that mentions them um, didn't say anything about whether you can eat them or not. And that usually means that you can't because otherwise they would mention it. Um, so for those of you who just came in, Eliana and, well, I guess Elijah too, uh, and Baron, um, today we're doing, I'm kind of like blowing through a few extra cherry species in the Prunus genus, uh, and then moving on to a new species of tree that is actually not a cherry at all, but people call it a cherry, uh, so that we can kind of like shift out into a, a new world of plants. Um, so right now I'm just doing the last few. This might actually be the last one, I forget. Um, after the common cherry laurel, I think I have one more, which I love, which is the Nanking cherry. Has anyone ever heard of this? <clears throat> so, the Nanking cherry is uh, native to Japan and to, or to East Asia, I guess more, lar more broadly. And it is a bush cherry it is, is what they call it. A, it's a shrub cherry. And it grows um, in these like, it has these beautiful little pink flowers, pinkish white flowers early in the season. Um, it grows, it has multi, multiple trunks or multiple stems, which is what makes it a shrub, and generally doesn't get taller than like, I'd say at the tallest, maybe eight feet tall. Uh, usually it's around six feet tall at its, uh, at its highest height that I've seen, and it just gets bushy. It shrubs out, um, and it has, it's just covered in these really yummy, tart, sour, uh, but also, you know, sour and sweet uh, berries early in the season, usually in, in June, probably late June, uh, just like most other cherries around here. And 
it's native to East Asia, but it grows really easily, really well throughout a good portion of the United States because we have similar, um, similar climates. And uh, that's something to just continue to remember when we're learning about these plants that there are, there's this like certain region of the world, um, these like latitudes and these certain climates all around the globe where we can kind of experiment with planting, you know, we can experiment with planting things that are grown in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, even Northern Africa, the Mediterranean, um, and parts of Western Asia, and uh, the, the, the parts of mi the Middle East um, that aren't so desert-like and all the way into um, China and Japan and East Asia, uh, where it's what's referred to as temperate. So temperate climates are, are where we live. There are a lot of places that are temperate climates and uh, we, can, we can play around with a lot of those plants as long as we're responsible because that's also how things occasionally become um, invasive and, and take over large, large, large amounts of space. Um, but also good to know um, that we have a lot to choose from. So the next one, um, I didn't get around to being able to write too much in this presentation, but uh, the next plant that I wanted to jump into is this species uh, that's not a cherry um, or not a prunus cherry, but is referred to as the cornelian cherry. Uh, because it does have edible cherry-like, cherry-looking fruit on it. Um, does anybody have any questions before I jump into this new species? Storm, what do you got for me? Hi, Doc. Would you mean the um, trees that are sometimes white and sometimes pink and sometimes both with the flowers? Sure. So there, um, this is, this tree is in the dogwood family and also in the dogwood genus. Uh, so Cornus is, Cornus is the genus. Uh, here, let me find the, there it is. Uh, Cornaceae is the family. And there are many, I, I think there are at least 80 species in this family. It's, it's a relatively small family compared to like the mint family that we talked about that has like 7,500 uh, species in it. Dogwood family is a fairly small family and it's, it has similar leaves, similar flowers, uh, and, and a few different patterns and styles to the way that the fruit ends up looking. There are a couple uh, that, that I know of. There are a few that have edible fruit on them, but they're, while they're edible and they might be yummy, they're generally kind of hard to, to deal with. Like maybe they have lots of seeds in them. Um, so people generally don't like to grow them to sell them. And, th and that's why they're a little bit less known. Um, but dogwoods are really common, really commonly planted uh, ornamental trees they flower very early in the spring. Um, they have these, uh, so they're a lot of times, yeah, yeah, what, what do you got, Storm? Um, because there are a lot of dogwoods in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, they're very common, and you said some of them are white, some of them are pink, um, Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're both, sometimes they're, a lot of times they're yellow. Um, so this particular tree, or sometimes a shrub, corn, the cornus, cornus mass is sometimes a, a normal looking tall, up to, you know, like 20 foot tall tree. So it's actually a pretty small tree. Uh, and other times it's a shrub um, that is only maybe 10 feet tall and branches out a lot. Um, and it has one of the reasons that people love dogwoods and especially this particular species is because it flowers so early. Um, it's something that, uh, do you all know, have you ever heard of forsythia? 
Forsythia is a uh, species that also has yellow flowers and it is a lot of times the first thing to flower in a lot of different places. People love planting it because it has these big, has these nice yellow flowers that come out um, a lot of times like still in the winter time, uh, in the late winter. Uh, witch, witch hazel is another plant that does that as well. Um, and this one is fits into that same category. So the Cornelian cherry has these beautiful little yellow flowers that pop out sometimes as early as February, uh, late February and often early March. And people love that. People want to see flowers as much as possible, as often as possible, as early as possible, um, even, uh, you know, especially after a long winter when everything has been, uh, you know, brown and dead looking for a long time. So that's why a lot of people like to plant this tree, but it's native um, to the, the area of the world where it's native, which is um, similar to where cherry, cherry trees are native. Um, does anybody want to re remind us where this is, what part of the world this is? Go for it, Liv. Europe? Yeah. So it's mostly uh, Western Europe, the Mediterranean region of Europe, and then um, parts of the Middle East and um, Western Asia. So um, this is pretty much, uh, well, and you can see this, this map is also showing that there are places that it is grown. It's not native to these areas, but the, these little orange triangles show that it's also grown um, in Great Britain and Ireland and um, parts of like Sweden and um, Switzerland. And so it, it has like a really, really wide range. So these places up here, are generally very cold, especially in comparison to these places down here. Um, so the Cornelian cherry, Cornus mass, is really adaptable. It's a very adaptable species. Um, oh, sorry, Baron, I didn't see you. You have a question? Unmute yourself, it's not, there you go. What do the X's mean? That's a good question. I think I, I got this picture off of a um from a thing i was reading about um about breeding so i'm i'm not sure it's possible that these x's are sites where they have where they're where they're breeding them and maybe these triangles are places that are kind of like outside of its normal range its normal growing habitat area um, let me see if I can pull that up. Give me one second. Does anybody else have a question while I'm looking up, uh, this map again on the internet? You can unmute yourselves if you have a question because I can't see you at the moment. Um, it's weird. This map doesn't tell me. It's <laughs> this is actually a really good, uh, really good lesson because this map doesn't tell me even on the website where I found it doesn't tell me what those symbols mean. Um, and that's really important. It's really important to have a key in a map. Um, so I will try to find the answer to that question um, and let you know, because these are good, they're really good maps. Um, doo -doo -doo. What's in the chat here? <laughs> yes, it can grow in Denmark. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome, it's a pretty awesome plant. Um, it's very adaptable to all sorts of different soil conditions and different growing conditions, different weather, uh, different temperatures. 
Um, it generally likes sunny locations and uh, grows often on the edge of forests like a lot of small trees do. A lot of small trees aren't going to grow deep in a forest, but they'll often do pretty well on the edge of a forest. And that's a lot of the trees that we talk about, a lot of like the fruit trees that are very common um, are, are those kind of woodland edge plants. Um, so I'm going to pull this up again. Uh, so I think the next things that I have to show you are, oh yeah, so this is where it is grown in the United States. It's not nearly as common um, in the, uh, it's, a lot of people don't know about it in the U.S. And, and people definitely don't think about it as an edible fruit as much in the United States as they do in Europe uh, and in the Middle East and, and now also in China. So it's not native to China, but Chinese uh, people, it has been used in Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, for a very long time. Um, so it grows in China as well, and it's popular there as an edible and as a medicinal. Here in the United States, it's not nearly as popular for food, uh, but it is popular for its flowers. And it will grow in this entire, you know, for really in most of the country, it, it grows in. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, even all the way up this line of uh, the the western coast of Canada and into Alaska. That's pretty wild. Um, this is the botanical drawing to show you the inside of the fruit, what the seed looks like. Uh, it's a different looking seed than your average cherry, um, which has those, you know, thick stone pits. Some people call cherries stone fruits. Um, and the, the flowers are also very different. Does anybody want to remind us what color cherry flowers are and, and a little bit of a difference between the, the two here? What do you remember? Go for it, Liv. The cherry tree flowers are usually like white. Yeah. And these ones are like yellow. Mm hmm. And it looks like um, the cherry trees go like out more, like their petals like actually go in more. And like it's more like a cup or like a bowl. And these ones go like out more. Sure, yeah, and I think they have a different number of petals. Um, so those things are all true. What you said, Liv, is great. The, the uh, cherry blossoms, I think, usually have five petals, and these have four. Um, the way that they emerge out of the stem is a little bit different, um, which I think you, you sort of said is, is that, like, these, the thing about these is that the flowers are actually really small, um, and sometimes people would look at this whole cluster here and think that this is one flower, but it's actually a whole group of little tiny flowers that are popping out of this bud here. So this is the bud and the flower, a bunch of flowers will emerge from this little bud. Um, but it all, when you're looking at it from the ground, from like your, your perspective, it will probably look like this is one big flower and this is another big flower. So that's something that's different. Um, Storm, you have a question? Um, I think that cherry tree, well, my cherry tree that I have in my yard has white flowers. And I um, have seen some, I think, that have pink flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. There are some. Um, Japanese flowering cherries are uh, often pink in color uh, because people because people think they're really beautiful. They have big showy, uh, you know, much bigger blossoms, much bigger flowers than your average fruiting cherry. And most of your fruiting cherries have white flowers, like Liv said. Um, 
so the the fruit still ends up hanging off like your like a cherry in like a your common your common cherry um so here's a photo of what the flowers look like when they're gonna pop when they're popping out of the buds first thing usually in the late winter or very very early spring but usually this is still you know considered within our winter um and then um this is what they look like when they explode out of those buds and here's another example of how many flowers are actually popping up in one that come out of one bud um so this is not just one flower this is a whole bunch of different flowers and these uh larger things that look like petals down at the bottom um that i'm pointing to here and here and here and over here are actually referred to as bracts uh, so that's spelled b-r-a-c-t a bract is not a flower part it's not a flower petal um, and most of the time when especially uh, within dogwoods, dogwoods very often have bracts that people think are flower petals. Uh, so the white color that you see um, a lot of times storm when you're seeing, you know, white flowers on dogwoods all around your area, you're actually looking at white bracts, which aren't actually part of the flower. Um, they're like, I think they're more kind of like modified leaf leaves. Um, and uh, but that's just a, like a technicality that just helps with identification um, as you're getting deeper and deeper into this stuff. Um, so this is what the fruit looks like when it's ripe. Um, it looks very similar to, I think, to uh, maybe a sweet cherry or a Nanking cherry. Um, they, certain varieties have larger fruit than others. I read about um, there's one particular variety that grows, that has been growing in Ukraine for a long time in Eastern Europe, uh, that is, has really, really large fruits that are like maybe an inch and a half big. Um, and I'm really excited about those and I hope that maybe someday I can grow them in my yard because I would love to have, I would love to have those here. Yeah, Liv says it looks like a big cranberry to me, which is a great uh, observation and also has a little bit of something to do with how they taste. So there are people uh, I've read in terms of the, the kinds of things that people do with uh, Cornelian cherries for eating, uh, the kind of like recipes that they use is actually using them as cranberry replacements in recipes. People make Cornelian cherry sauces kind of like cranberry sauce and um, so they have this kind of like sweet and sour flavor and I love cranberries. I don't know about you but cranberries are something that I really really love but cranberries require very very specific growing conditions um, and the Cornelian cherry doesn't really care. It will grow in a lot of different places. So um, that's a good, a good comparison. Kind of like the Juneberry is a lot like the blueberry in certain ways, and the Juneberry grows very uh, in, in a lot. The Juneberry can tolerate a lot of different places, and the blueberry can't. Um, this is similar to that. So if you really like cranberries, but you can't grow cranberries where you are because you don't have a you know wet enough conditions, you don't have you know a cranberry bog. Uh, or, you know, the kind of soil that cranberries like, um, which is also acid soil, then you can grow the Cornelian cherry and just use it as a substitute. I think that's super cool. Um, they, oh, what's in the chat? Yeah, cool. Liv's gone to a lot of cranberry bogs. I uh, have been to a couple in this area in the Pine Barrens that are like abandoned. Um, and they're really, really cool to be around because they still grow cranberries even though they're abandoned. So uh, you get to you get to eat them uh, and hang out with the cranberries. <laughs> I have a friend who's also a cranberry. Um, he's a scientist who studies cranberries. Um, and goes to Rutgers here in New Jersey, which is cool. 
Um, so this is what the Cornelian cherry looks like. Um, this is this one is more that's like a little bit like a shrub, sort of shrubby, sort of tree-like. Um, and this is what the leaves look like in the summertime. So the flowers emerge first. The flowers come out first thing and then the flowers go away and the fruits start forming and the leaves come out. Um, and that that's the way that a lot of different plants are. Sometimes the leaves come out first and then the flowers. Sometimes flowers come out first and then the leaves. Um, so this is what it would look like in summertime. This is a more close up photo of what the leaves look like and does anybody have a comparison of uh, or, or thoughts on what how this looks to them uh, compared to cherries to the cherries that we've been learning about? If not, that's okay. Leaves are a little bit harder. Um, you have to you have to look at a lot of leaves, I think, before you can tell the differences. Um, to me, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. And one of the main things that's obvious to me is um, these are a little bit more, um, well, they're, they're much smoother. Um, Baron, do you have a question or a comment? Um, I was just gonna say that I'm pretty sure um, both of their veins go up. Like, you, you know, the veins on the leaves mm -hmm. you mean go up they kind of go in this direction. And normally veins go normally out, more out. Yeah, that's a good observation. So something about dogwood leaves that, so cherries, I think you're right, that cherries also go up, but the dogwood leaves to me have a very particular kind of pattern. Um, they're a little bit more, they're a little bit thicker uh, than cherry leaves for one. They're also much more smooth and um, cherry leaves are to me kind of like papery thin and they're serrated. They have these, you know, kind of sharp serrated edges and um, they're really pointy most of the time. They're very pointy on the end. These here are pointed also on the end, um, but this, their smoothness and this particular like very straight veining like you talked about, Baron. Uh, is something that's pretty common uh, that I've seen. Yeah, like what Liv's doing. Yeah, they have this like, they kind of just do a bunch of like big, big ovals. Um, and that's, that's pretty common. Um, they also are opposite each other. So the, the leaves come out like this um, across from each other. And that's also common to the dogwood trees and not necessarily to the cherry trees. Um, and then the next thing I'll show you is the bark, which is, anybody want to tell me how this is different from cherry bark? Go for it, Baron. It's harder to see the pores. Definitely, yeah. Um, so the, anybody else have any other comments about it? Go for it, Liv. Uh -oh. There you go. It looks like someone just got some like bark from a craft store and randomly placed it on a tree. <laughs> and like glued it on in little patches. Yeah. Yeah, it's very it's very patchy uh, when it's when it's an adult and it has like a whole bunch of different colors going on. Uh, it's like a little bit reddish brown. It's a little bit darker brown. It's got this kind of like tannish look to it. Um, cherry bark when it gets really old is also kind of scaly, uh, but not like this. This this is like patchy. Um, and cherry bark, when it gets older, usually gets to be a like grayish color. And when it's young, cherry bark is, is smoother and it has all those, like you said, those pores, those, uh, the word is lenticels. Um, so this, you know, we're probably looking at lenticels when we're seeing like this dot here and this dot up here and this little guy up here, like it's still, it still has those pores and it's still breathing in the same way. Um, but it's definitely not the prominent, it's not the thing that you see first, which what I notice first is, is what Liv said, these patchy, the patchy areas. Uh, 
lily pad do you have your uh do you have your hand up <laughs> um it looks kind of like a bunch of kids just came and scraped at the bark for hours yeah a little bit it does a little bit like that it looks it looks like it's not super healthy um but but it is this is common and and one of the things that's cool about oh what do you got chaos give it to me um i it looks it kind of looks oh i can't hear you get closer to your screen it kind of looks like it's in a desert it looks like it's in a desert yeah like it's all cracked like the like the soil or the sand in a desert when it's super dry and cracked like that yeah so one of the things that's cool about bark like this and when bark is patchy or like when it curls sometimes like birch bark curls around itself um those are actually adaptations like the plant has adapted and evolved to be this way um partially because these little patchy areas with all these little like cracks and crags and crevices are really great habitat for insects um there are they they actually are like homes it's like it's like a bunch of little rooms for tiny insects that we probably don't even notice most of the time um and they that's like a it's it's a cooperation between the tree and a bunch of other species a lot of times um, so that's cool. Sometimes when bark looks like this and it's not common, it's a bad thing. Sometimes it means that the tree is actually sick, but this is what it looks like. Uh, this is what this is supposed to look like. Um, I think that might be my last slide for the day. Um, but this, but the, the fruits of the Cornelian cherry are really, really good for us. They are, um, just like cherries. They're good for your immune system. They're anti-inflammatory. Oh, Baron, do you have a question or a comment? I actually have a dogwood in my backyard. What color are the flowers? Um, white. It it normally doesn't flower though. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Is it in the shade? Is it super shady? No, not really. Huh. I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know a whole lot about dogwoods. Are does our dogwood flower? Our dogwood flowers, but it flowers mm. tiny flowers, not the big pink kind. Ah, tiny and flowers. It has a, um, the twigs are red tipped and okay. yellow. Is it the red osier? Is it red or is that just the, just the tips are red? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember right now. In the winter, it's really red. Like the, the whole, all the sticks are really red yeah. and then it gets covered in, in green and yeah. the tips turn green. That's uh, the red osier dogwood. It has red, red, it's a shrubby, it's more shrubby a lot of times. It's shrubby, but ours is like 12 feet tall. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the reasons people love it too. Yeah, it's really pretty. Well, it's shrubby, but ours is like 12 feet. <laughs> well, yeah. shrubs can get that big. People think shrubs are like short, but really they can get to be really, really, really big. All right, I'm gonna leave you. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna run out of time and I'll see you all. Oh, Eliana has a dogwood too. I think I'm going to run out of time, um, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Eliana, if you want to try to say what you have to say, go for it. I have a, one of those pink dogwoods. Pink flowers? Pink, yeah. Yeah, pink flowers, yeah. That's awesome. I grew up with a big white dogwood in my yard uh, that I climbed all the time. It was a really good climbing tree. <laughs> I'll Bye. see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>